Hey, so in the previous video, we saw how to use Hotwire and how the Turbo JS library works and how you can use Turbo Drive and then Turbo Frames to update certain frames of the page without changing the entire page and then Turbo Streams to update multiple fragments of the page and that's all vanilla Hotwire stuff. That's cool and all, but I'm going to show you now how you can use Tubo Laravel and clean some of the code that we had to write on the previous video. So you can justify using the library. And also, I'm going to show you how you can use WebSockets and how to install the Laravel WebSockets package locally using Laravel Sale. And we are going to see how you can stream to streams over WebSockets using the Laravel WebSockets package. So yeah, I hope you like it. Let's get to it. Let's install the Turbo Laravel package. If we head over to the documentation, we can see there, is a, there are a couple of steps that we should do. In our case, we are not using Jetstream, so we are not concerned about this one. We are not also using Stimulus, so we are not concerned about this one. So let's just install it in a plain Laravel application. I'm using Sayo here, so I'm gonna replace that. It tells us that we should run to npm install and then npm run dev again. So I'm going to do that. Before we dive any further, let's see what it actually did to our to our application. So it Change the composer and composer log files. Makes sense to install the Turbo Laravel package. But it also changed our composer.json file. Let's take a look at that. It installed Laravel Echo and Pusher.js, but it should also install the Hotwire D Turbo library. But in our case, we already had it, so that didn't change. Let's see what else it did. It also changed the app.js file. So if we check that, we should see that it's included a new tag element, which is also included over here. But before we dive in, let's see what the what it did to the bootstrap. Yeah, so it mainly included echo as a separate JS file. And we are going to discuss this change when, later when we are talking about broadcasting. Let's head over to our app.js and let's inspect this custom echo tag. So the package publishes a new custom HTML tag for you and it's called Turbo Echo Stream Source. And you can use it like this in your HTML code. We're going to dive in on how this works, but for now we don't need it. So that's all it does to your assets. If you already have an application and you want to use Turbo, you don't have to run Turbo install. You should mainly install Turbo like this and start the process and you're good to go. If you want to use the Turbo Echo Stream tag, you can just copy the code and move over to your application. Make sure to also copy the, this code. Again, I'm going to explain what this does when we are talking about broadcasting. There is one missing stat though. We should install the Turbo middleware in the web routes group. So let's do that. Let's go back to the application and look for the HTTP kernel. And inside the web routes group, I'm going to paste the Turbo middleware. So. This is mainly it. The package is already installed and we already compiled the assets. So let's see what it does to the application. It should all be working the same. Yeah, that's cool, but nothing really changed, right? We didn't change the code. We are still doing the overrides that we had to do. So let's clean some of the changes that we had to do now that we are using the package. If we head over to the web routes file, we can remove completely this try catch and redirection hack. 
That's because when you're using the Turbo middleware, we can detect when a validation exception is thrown, and we, and if you are using the resource routes convention, we know where to redirect you to. So if your route name ends with a dot update, we redirect you to a dot edit page using the same route parameters that you are using. Similarly, we can remove the try catch block on the create task because it will work the same way as I just explained. We can also replace this entire check in the header with a macro that the package provide. So we can use once turbo stream. Similarly, you don't have to do this yourself. We can you can rely on the package. So you can return a response and then turbo stream and pass it a model. From the model, we can infer what the resource name it is. In this case, it's a task. So it will look for an underscore task.plage.php partial inside the tasks folder. So let's rename this for now and see what it does. Let's try it out in the browser and see if the application is still behaving properly. Let's open the DevTools and see if everything is working. And the validation is still working. Inline editing validation is still in place. Let's try creating a new task and see inspecting the response that the package generates for us. So as you can see, the form didn't actually was replaced with a new form, but the task showed up here. And if we check the response, we can see that a turbo stream tag was generated for us and it sets the target. It also uses the same convention. So if, so if the model is named task, it sets the target as the plural of that model resource. And it by default uses a pen, but we can actually change that really easily by setting a second parameter here and set, saying that we want to prepend instead of a pend. We try to create a new task again. It will show up on top now. That's good, but we are not cleaning up the form after we create a task anymore. And it would be cool if the package could use the same turbo stream view that we just created. Well, it turns out that it actually does. If we rename it back to created, instead of trying to generate a turbo stream response for this model that was recently created, created during the request, it will first look for a turbo folder and a created turbo stream view on it. It does this for created, updated, or deleted model events. So if there is a turbo stream specific view, it will not generate one using your, your partial, but it will instead use that view. And that view, we are updating the form, if you remember from a few seconds ago. So now let's try this in the browser. Let's submit the form. And the form got cleaned. If we inspect the response, we can see that it's actually using that turbo stream. So that's cool. So we didn't have to change our model for this all to work. But there is one thing that we might want to change our model. Turbo Laravel actually integrates with Laravel Echo. And what this allows us to do is broadcast this same Turbo Stream views that we are shipping to the browser on the HTTP response. We can send it over the wire and HTML over the wire using Laravel Echo. And to do that, let's first set up the Laravel WebSockets package. If we head over to the documentation, on the installation section, let's first commit these changes. Now let's install the Laravel WebSockets package. So 
So I'm using Laravel Sail locally and I have to create a new Docker Compose service for the WebSocket server. So I'm going to copy over the web service and I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to name it WebSockets.test. It's going to use the same runtime, same everything. The port is going to be different though. So instead of app port, it's going, it's going to use Laravel WebSockets port. And instead of port 80, it's going to use 6003 and 6003 as the default port. I'm mapping the volume, so I want it to use the same code. And it shouldn't depend on anything. So I'm going to remove this part. I want it to override the command. So the command that it actually uses behind the scenes. So I'm going to pass it down here. That it should start. Instead of the default command, it should run php artisan websocket serve. Pressing the same port that we use below. And I should also set the host to 0, .0, 0.0. So it not only works for localhost, but also to anyone connected to my network. So this should be all the changes I need in the Docker Compose file, but there are some other changes that I have to do. If we head over to the documentation we can see that we should publish some config files, actually some migrations. Let's do that. And now we have to migrate the application. And after that, we are going to publish the config file. And that should be it for the package itself, but we do have to make some changes to our pusher replacement over here. Let's also require this package. And then we should set the broadcast driver to pusher. So it's telling us that Laravel WebSockets 2.0 requires the version 4 for this package. So let's install that. Now we should change the broadcast driver to pusher. Let's go to the .env file. and look for broadcast and change this to pusher. I also created, I have already created some EMV variables here that we are going to need, as well as the Laravel WebSockets port that we saw in the Docker Compose file. So make sure you also create this. So these environment variables, they will be available for us in the backend. But some of these environment variables we have to publish to our JS file. And to do so, we have to prefix them with the mix prefix. And to know which ones we need, we can head over to the app.js file and bootstrap. And then we can inspect the echo file. So all these keys, we are going to need them, except the SSL. That it's that one you're going to need only in production. So make sure you configure it properly. The backend should use the Docker Compose service name as the host name, but the front end should use local localhost or your local Docker IP. I should also enable the broadcasting component. So let's head over to config app.php and let's remove this comment over here and also let's go to the broadcasting.php file 
in the documentation they also mentioned that we have to pass in some options over here so let's do that in our case it should be 603 as the default port but we actually passing these variables in the .env file over here and in here we pass the port so it should actually use the environment variable and default to 603 for the host it can use the Persia app host env variable and if we did everything correctly we should be able to start the websocket service and everything should be working locally let's try that out if we inspect the services running it should be up so here we can see the websocket service and it says here that it's up and it's bound to the correct port so everything should be working Let's try that out in the browser. If we open the network tab under WebSockets and we refresh the page, we should see a new WebSocket connection and it should be green here. So everything seems to be working. There are some messages going on already. And it says that the connection was successfully established. So that's good. Now that the configuration is done, we can move on to other things. So the package allows you to broadcast everything separately by dispatching the events whenever you want. But the way I like to do this is using the broadcast straight. So let's try to do that in the task itself. Close this env and open the task model and use the broadcast straight. So now it should hook into the model events and broadcast tasks to everyone connected to the, to the task channel. But I actually want to stream task changes to the project the task belongs to. So let's try that out. We can override the target by setting the broadcasts to method or using the broadcasts to public property so let's copy that out paste it over here and instead of post we are going to use project which which is the relationship name and what this is going to do is whenever a broadcast message is generated by the broadcast straight for the for a task it will send it to this targets channel and if we head over to routes it's routes channels we should create a new channel for the project in our case the user will be able to receive a request if the user id happens to match the user id that created the project If we open up the project model, there is a user relationship here. So that's what we are relying on. Now we should be able to broadcast new tasks to everyone connected to this channel. We now can use the custom HTML tag that we saw when we install the package and we can specify the channel name over here. So if we go to the index page to create a task we can place this new tag at the top or whatever we want but i'm gonna place it right here so the channel name is called project and it uses the project id so i have a project here that i can use this so let's try this out in the browser let's open up a new i actually have it here so let's open that up and i'm going to split screens i'm going to inspect i'm going to inspect the websocket connection here clean up the messages and let's try to create a message
So something's up. Let's check our response. Let's try again and check our response. We got a 500 error. Let's see what that means. Could not connect to broadcaster. Yeah, so the name here is wrong actually. It's supposed to be web sockets. So let's stop the containers. Change the name for the service. Yeah, I was supposed to be I was supposed to use plural here. So my bad, sorry. Change the service name and then bring everything back up. Let's refresh both pages and see what's going on. So on this screen, I'm going to use, I'm going to inspect the WebSocket connection and see what we receive. And on this screen, I'm going to inspect the HTTP connection. So let's try to create a new task. I, by the way, I cleaned up the previous task, so getting loaded. Let's try to create a new task now. And it works. Both users got the new task. This user, as you can see, it got it from the turbo stream returned from the response. And this user got it from the WebSocket. There is a new message over here. And if we inspect it, you should see that the same turbo stream response was rendered over WebSockets too. And that gets propagated to the screen. So everything seems to be working. That's cool. But there is actually a problem with this. So let's try this out. I'm going to fill in the form, but but before I submit this form, I'm going to send I'm going to create a new task from the other window. And as you can see, the other screen, the form in the other screen, the form got updated. But we don't want that to happen. And that's because our turbo stream view is using is replacing the form for everyone. So let's change that. So we don't want this to replace the form to everyone. We just want it to replace the form if the task was recently created. So when is a task recently cre created? In the HTTP request. So when the package is generating the turbo stream response using your custom turbo stream view, at this time the model will actually be recently created. That's a larval thing. So this partial, this part of the partial will render and the form for the user creating the task will be replaced. But once the job is being processed in background, which we are going to change that to be. This task will not be recently created, that's fetched from the database. So by then, this view, this part of the view is not going to be rendered, so the form on the other side for, for the other users using the page will not be changed. So let's try that out. I actually have to change the configuration file over here to use Redis for the queue connection as well. And now I also have to start a worker process. So I can do that using sale artisan queue work and specifying that I want it to try once. So now let's try that out. I'm gonna use the form and then I'm gonna replace it. I'm gonna try to replace it with a new task from another user. And the task got inserted, but the form wasn't changed. If we inspect the WebSocket message, we can see in the TurboStreamer response that the form is not there. So 
just by setting up WebSockets and setting up the broadcast creating our model, we so if I change it over here, it will also get updated on the other screen. As you can see, and that works from WebSockets as well. So these all should work for created, updated or deleted tasks. But this, there is a gotcha over here. So if we try to create a task here, we'll see what I'm talking about. So yeah, that, that did it the trick. So what happened over here is that the task was created and it was broadcasted to everyone. And this user was already fed with the response body over here. So at this point, you have two options. You can either return nothing and wait for the WebSocket connection to happen over here, or you can feed the current user with HTTP and only broadcast messages to other users. So we can actually do that by instructing Turbo to broadcast to other users only. Let's do that in our app service provider. Let's import the facade and that should be everything we need to do. Let's also restart the worker. So our changes in the app service provider picks up. Now let's try that out in the browser and everything should be fixed. Actually, we shouldn't see the issue anymore. So we no longer receive duplicates over WebSockets. The message got processed, sent, but there was no users connected, so no one actually received it. We can see that we can see that the message never got here. So that's good. If I try that on a new screen, if I open up a new window and move that to the side. We can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to try to create a task here. And that should show up over here, but not duplicate over here. So yeah, that, that seems to be working. So this is the library. This is hot wire happening with broadcasts over web sockets and everything that's going on. I know there is a lot, there seems to be a lot, but the underlying technique is actually not that much to master. So you should be able to pick up this handbook, read it and understand how everything should be working together and use the library and be able to inspect the response bodies and the messages going on over WebSockets and fully understand how everything works under the hood. There's also a turbo native aspect to everything over here. And I'm going to show a demo to you folks. That's Hotwire, that's Turbo Laravel. This is how you can build applications with it. These are the building blocks that you can use to build applications with using Hotwire. But that is a third component on this entire um, way of building applications that I want to demo. And that's turbo native, but that's something for another episode. So stay tuned for the next one and I'll see you there.